Lucas, this one I want to um, dedicate to those who don't have jobs, who've just finished university, perhaps you're out there and you're looking for a job at the moment. How did you get your first job, you know, so that you're actually employed and earning a salary when you finished university? Uh, okay, I graduated um, in university in Canada, University of Queensland. When I came back home, um, I tarmacked for about, about one year. And um, initially what I used to do was make copies of my CV and, you know, send them to these companies who maybe behind the paper had advertised vacancies and so on. And <laughs> no one responded. So I sat back and asked myself, why am I waiting for someone to give me a job? Why can't I choose the job which I want? So I knew from the beginning that I wanted to become a stockbroker. So I went through the list of stockbrokers. And I started at the top, which is the best stockbroking firm in the industry. And it was Shamung and Partners. So I made a copy of my CV and walked into the Shamung and Partners and, you know, handed my CV to the PA of the MD and insisted, you know, I'd like to have a word with them. And he said, well, you'll have to book an appointment. Mm -hmm. You have to come back the next day. And I kept on going. And when you're going for, when you're looking for a job, make sure you look neat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I received many CVs. And just the other week, uh, two weeks ago, a lady came in. And uh, she's a graduate of uh, Jomo Kenyatta University. And she was looking for internship. She was very confident. And just by the way she carried herself and her confidence level, you know, sold her. Because there are so many graduates who graduate. Yeah. Every year, I think, it's about 40,000 graduates graduate from the various universities, mm -hmm. all coming in to look for jobs. So what is it about you that would sell you, yeah? that would catch the eye of the employer? Yeah. I think these are the things you should be asking yourself. And confidence plays a very big role in this. You know, so, so maybe just going back to Shamunga. So you went there and you told them, you presented yourself, you were neat. And what did you say? I mean, he, how he do you... gave me an audience. The MD finally gave me an audience and uh, he told me, well, how many there are times no jobs. did you go? How many times did you I go? I think I was there like almost five times. Okay. Uh, and Before until the PA you... said, oh my God, this young guy is <laughs> coming too much. Yeah. Uh, he gave me an audience and he told me, well, there are no jobs. I told him, no, I'll do anything. He said, yes, anything. I said, yes, anything. He said, well, there's a clerk. I'll make you a clerk in the trading floor. And I told him, that's fine. I'll take the job. So my first job was a clerk in a stockbroking farm. But I had to prove myself to the MD of the farm. And that meant that since I had a finance degree, I was not going to be a clerk for the rest of my life. I started doing analysis. So I became an analyst. From analysis, the first bonds started, uh, first bonds were issued by the central bank in 97 towards the end. I learned how to value bonds and trade them. In fact, I traded the first bonds in the Nairobi Stock Exchange. And this was a part of your job description. This was not you were part, supposed to be a clerk. This was went... not part of my job description. I was living in a bed sitter and uh, I constantly would go home and ask myself, is this a life I want to live the rest of my life? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And it is then that I said, no, I would prove this guy that I'm more than just a clerk. You understand? So I started doing more things within the company. And he finally saw the value and each time I climbed up that corporate ladder. Wow. I was 23 at that time. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome stuff. Persistence and confidence. In our next video, we're going to look at if you're not brought up in a way that perhaps give you opportunities to be confident, to speak in manners that are 
you know, convincing and you feel a bit watered down and most people tell you you look like a watered down chicken. I think we want to discuss that in the next video. How do you get to that place where you can stand up in front of a CEO of a massive company and tell him I'm the person that you need? So subscribe guys and stay tuned. This is Rena Hicks and you're on Money Wise where we create, grow and preserve wealth.